Fantastic. So, so we were looking at how we might encourage more young people to volunteer, uh, and we looked at a, a kind of a fictional organisation that was set up in, to, to, to do just that to encourage young people to volunteer in the local community. And, and the first two challenges we, we um, saw in doing that was both first the notion of volunteering, which is doing something for someone else, uh, or, or doing something for someone else's benefit. And the notion of young people, which is inherently broad, and it's too broad for us really to understand. So we, we, the first thing we did was we stopped talking about volunteering, and we talked about young people engaging in socially valuable activities and being able to understand what socially valuable activities are and who, that, who makes that decision about what is valuable and what not. We'll come back to that again in a moment. But the second part we talked about was the way in which those activities are presented and shared, which links directly to young people's intrinsic motivation to be involved in them, rather than a contrived approach to suggesting that volunteering is a good thing in itself. So rather than the contrived notion of getting involved in volunteering for a, a range of benefits, we want to highlight the socially valuable activities that link directly to the interests of young people. Now, one of the reasons for doing that then, if, if we work down, is to think about the, kind of the, the rewards that young people would get for being involved. And again, I'll come back to that in a second, but a really great example of this is talking about Wikipedia. Now, Wikipedia, for most people, is a way of contributing an, 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 uh, to a much larger program about kind of developing this shared encyclopedic knowledge online. However, you could describe it as volunteering, you putting your time and effort into developing someone else's product. The, the difference in those two descriptions, one is you are involved in a much larger piece of work. The second is, as a volunteer, you are contributing to someone else's piece of work. And what we're looking at is describing volunteering in that first sense. How can we support young people to be engaged in socially value activities that they are part of rather than they're doing for someone else? Now, part of that, though, is making those opportunities um, more aware for young people and understanding the barriers for them to be involved, but also identifying the motivations that young people will bring to want to get involved in those sorts of activities. And a key element that we could add to this is this new organisation or collective we were pulling together was not necessarily um, promoting the idea of volunteering, making the opportunities aware, and then supporting young people to bring together the different benefits that they have accrued uh, from being involved in such act activities. So although their intrinsic motivation will link to the social activity, we're thinking of then being able to highlight the impact that has on their jobs and their employment. So that's where we started off. Now, when we looked at that in a little bit more detail, we talked about some of the principal things we'd need to address. And the first starts with a, a quote that came from the, the online consultation, which is about giving a digital space a physical home. Because to us, that's one of the, at the heart that changes the way in which we think about what communities are. And that was central to what we talked about. When we talk about young people engaging with communities, it's too easy to assume traditional notion of communities. Instead, we need to think about networks of interest, as you have around Wikipedia, about geographic focus, locale, online, offline, a whole range of, of, of sorts of communities that young people can have a positive social impact with. And we start off with a, a diverse range of communities, but then also need to equally look at the diversity of young people, recognising that just because they're aged between 13 and 24 or so doesn't mean they have a, kind of a shared outlook on life. We need to look at the, that diversity and, and provide support and services and resources that meet that great diversity. Um, but part of that is the diversity in, um, in motivation to get involved in these sorts of socially useful activities. And those motivations will change depending on the young person, but also temporally, depending on the time, whether they're, they're looking to find work, they might have a motivation to get involved in the activities, whether they have a particular um, need to demonstrate some skills, they might have their own kind of temporal motivation. And that big piece around motivation was at the heart of developing the right kind of program of support. Um, and that is made up of lots of different things. So motivation for behaviour, understanding why young people want to get involved in these socially useful activities. Looking at incentives and gamification, recognising that, that incentives and motivations change over time. But specifically looking at how we can link together the intrinsic motivation that young people have for engaging in these activities with the extrinsic motivation that we all might have in wanting to develop better and, and more socially useful activities. At the heart, though, the final point is recognising that understanding what constitutes a socially useful activity is a really complex task and something that should be determined by the communities that we're talking about um, rather than by a group of individuals in a room at the wonderful RSA.